Well, obviously, it's certainly up to the president and, frankly, any patient whether or not they want to have this sort of testing. But I should point out that the testing shouldn't be thought of as something that would embarrass or, or malign, but rather maybe provide some answers to what is driving some of the signs and symptoms we've seen with President Biden, uh, and maybe even provide an opportunity for some early treatment. It could provide a baseline, something that could be tracked and followed over time so that uh, you could find early signs of any kind of deficit, maybe even before the person themselves recognized it. Or, or sometimes this testing just provides peace of mind that there is nothing to worry about. I should also point out that in the United States, uh, there is a, a cognitive exam that is usually recommended for anyone over the age of 65 as part of their annual wellness checkup. Anyone over the age of 65 going through about an hour's worth of cognitive testing, physical exam, patient history, to try and figure out are there cognitive deficits that can be addressed early. What I think has been driving some of the concerns since the debate uh, among my, many of my colleagues in medicine was some of the things they saw for a sustained and sort of protracted time during the debate. Um, the differences in speech, the halting of speech, the confused rambling sometimes that occurred, but also what they saw when President Biden seemed to not have any facial expression. I think it's why so many people have said cognitive testing as well as movement disorder testing could be potentially beneficial. As you certainly heard by now, the White House said, look, it was a bad night. Uh, that's basically what it was. It was a bad night. He was jet lagged to some extent. He had, had not been getting enough sleep and he had a cold. And those things certainly can cause episodes like we saw. But again, the question is, is this episodic or is this reflective of something that is more significant? We do know finally that he did have a, a fairly complete exam back in February, but a cognitive test was not part of that exam. They ruled out things like stroke, like multiple sclerosis, and they made note that he did not have Parkinson's disease. But there are other things that can cause Parkinsonism besides Parkinson's disease, and they didn't really mention that. So I think there are still a lot of unanswered questions, but again, it is up to the president and any, any patient whether or not they want to have this sort of testing, but there are many reasons it could be beneficial.